Welcome to this video in which we introduce the concept of processing a discrete time signal by a discrete time system and the classification of such systems. A discrete time system, as denoted in the figure, is a mathematical operator or mapping that transforms one signal, the input XM, into another signal, the output YM, by means of a fixed set of rules or operations. The discrete time systems may be classified in terms of the properties that they possess. Some of these general properties are A system is memoryless if the output at any time n is n0 depend only on the input at time is n is n0. A system property that is important for real-time applications is causality, which implies that for any index n0, the response of the system at the time index n is n0 depends only on the input up to index n is n0. Thus, for a causal system, changes in the output cannot precede changes in the input. A system property that is important in applications such as channel equalization and deconvolution is invertibility. A system is said to be invertible if the input of the system uniquely can be determined from the output. In order for a system to be invertible, it is necessary for distinct inputs to produce distinct outputs. An additive system is one for which the response to a sum of inputs is equal to the sum of the outputs individually. A system is homogeneous if scaling the input by a constant c results in a scaling of the output by the same amount. The impulse response of a system, denoted with Hn, is defined as a response of a system when the input is a delta pulse, delta n. In most cases, it's important for a system to have a response Ym that is bounded in amplitude when the input is bounded. A system with this property is said to be stable in the bounded input, bounded output sense, abbreviated as BIBO stability. A system that is both additive and homogeneous is said to be linear. If a system has the property that a shift or a delay of the input by N0 samples results in a shift of the output by the same amount of N0 samples, the system is said to be time invariant. More formally, let Yn be the response of a system to an arbitrary input signal Xn. The system is said to be time invariant if, for any delay of n0 samples, the response to Xn minus n0 is Yn minus n0. In effect, a system is time invariant if its properties or characteristics do not change with time. A system that is both linear and time invariant is referred to as a linear time invariant system, abbreviated as LTI. For an LTI system, stability is guaranteed if the impulse response is absolute summable. The advantage of an LTI system is the elegance and relative simplicity of the underlying theory. Stability and causality are easily checked, and hereafter we will see that the input-output relation is conveniently described by convolution and time domain. Both properties, linearity and time invariance of an LTI system are important to understand how to simplify the mathematical analysis to obtain a greater insight and understanding of system behavior. So, Let's take a closer view to both of these properties separately. First, linearity. In general, assume that an input Xn, which is applied to a system, results in an output Ym. Thus, X1n results in Y1n and X2n in Y2n. On the one hand, we can first apply separately X1n and X2n to the same system and then weight and combine both outputs into a new output Wn is alpha Y1n 
plus beta y2m. On the other hand, we can first wait and combine both inputs into a new input xn is alpha x1n plus beta x2n. When applying this new input xn to the same system, it results in an output ym. A system is linear if both outputs wm and ym are the same. A deeper understanding of time invariance can be shown as follows. Again, an input xn to a system results in an output ym. Furthermore, the block denoted as delay by n0 delays the input with n0 samples. Now, on the one hand, we can first delay an input xn with n0 samples and then apply the delay signal to the system. On the other hand, we can do this the other way around, that is, first apply the same input xn to the same system and then delay the output with the same amount of n0 samples. A system is time invariant when both outputs are the same. The figure shows a basic LPI system, which can be described by the given difference equation with coefficients b0 until bm-1. The LTI system that we consider in this video can also contain feedback loops, which changes the difference equation accordingly. The coefficients a1 until an-1 are used for the feedback part. As we can see from this signal flow graph, the basic building blocks of an LTI system are multipliers, delays and adders. In case all feedback coefficients are zero, the LTI system represents a finite impulse response filter, abbreviated as FIR filter. The difference equation is a finite sum of weighted and delayed input samples. By substituting xn as delta n, we obtain an expression for the impulse response hn, which has finite length. Moreover, the m impulse response values h0 until hm-1 are the same as the m filter coefficients b0 until bm-1 for the FAR case. An example of an FAR filter is depicted in the figure which can be described by the given difference equation. The coefficients of the impulse response hn show the relation with the weights of the FER filter, and the figure shows a plot of the impulse response. In case at least one of the feedback coefficients is not equal to zero, the impulse response can have infinite length. This can be shown by the following simple example as depicted in the figure which can be described by the difference equation yn as xn plus a times yn minus 1. This system has one feedback loop and one feedback coefficient, denoted by the number a, which is assumed to have an absolute value smaller than 1. Furthermore, we assume the output yn is equal to 0 for all indices n smaller than 0. We can write the difference equation by evaluating it step by step as follows. For n is 0, the output y0 is x0 because yn is 0 for all indices smaller than 0. For n is 1, we can substitute the previous output value y0 as x0 and y1 is equal to a sum of the two previous input samples x1 plus a times x0. Using this result for ns2 and writing it out results in a sum of three previous input signal samples x2 plus a times x1 plus a squared times x0. When following this procedure we can write the difference equation as a weighted sum of delayed input signal samples. By substituting xn as delta n, 
we obtain an expression for the impulse response Hn. The upper bound of the summation is depending on the running index n. In other words, the length of the impulse response becomes infinite long. Another way to describe this impulse response Hn is with the unit step function Un. The figure shows the resulting impulse response of this simple LVI system with one feedback loop for a smaller than zero, which is an infinite long exponential decaying function. Now we will show that a so-called convolution sum procedure holds for any LTI system. For this we start by writing a sequence of an input signal as a possible infinite sequence of delta pulses. For any LTI system we can perform the following steps. When applying a delta pulse to the input of the system, the result is the impulse response Hn. Because of the time invariance property, a shifted delta pulse over k samples will result in a shifted impulse response Hn minus k. Multiplying the shifted delta pulse with a constant xk will result in xk Hn minus k because of linearity. Finally, when summing over all indices k will result into the given output yn. Combining, it follows that the output yn of any LTI system can be evaluated by the convolution sum procedure of the input xn with the impulse response hn of the LTI system. Usually, the mathematical convolution sum procedure is described by an operator which is symbolically denoted by a star. In this animation, we will show an example of the convolution sum procedure of a finite length input signal xn, which consists of four delta pulses for index n is 0 until n is 3, and the length 3 FAR filter with impulse response hn is half delta n plus delta n minus 1 plus delta n minus 2. First, we plot both xn and hn as a function of a new index k. Then, we mirror the impulse response hk around the index k is 0 into h minus k and shift this mirrored impulse response to the first non-zero sample of the input xk. Then, piecewise multiply all elements of xk which h minus k and add all the values. Then shift h minus k over one sample into h minus k plus one. Piecewise multiply all elements of xk with h minus k plus one and add all values. And then repeat these steps. So the different steps of the convolution sum procedure are as follows. Plot both input x and impulse response h as a function of index k. Mirror the impulse response around index k is 0 into h minus k. Then for any new index n, shift the mirrored impulse response h minus k to the new index n to obtain h n minus k. The output yn for each new index n is equal to the result of the sum of element by element multiplication of xk and hn minus k. Finally, note that in case both input x and impulse response h are finite length sequences, the output is also finite length. For example, when xn is a sequence of length n, and the impulse response has length m, then the length of the output sequence yn is equal to n plus m minus 1 samples. Some properties of the convolution sum may be used to simplify the evaluation of the convolution sum procedure. 
The first property is the commutative property, which implies that the convolution sum of xn with hn behaves exactly the same as the other way around, that is, the convolution sum of hn with xn. A second property is the associative property, which implies that if two systems with impulse responses h1 and h2n are connected in cascade, an equivalent system is one that has impulse response equal to the convolution sum of h1n and h2n. The third property is the distributive property, which implies that if two systems with impulse responses h1n and h2n are connected in parallel, an equivalent system is one that has impulse response that is equal to the sum of h1n and h2n. The commutative and associative properties of an LTI system results into the following so-called cascade equivalences, which imply that there are different representations of a cascade of LTI systems. This can be shown as follows. Assume that we are given a cascade of two LTI systems with impulse responses H1n and H2n respectively. In the first representation, the output yn is obtained by first convolving xn with h1n, and after that, the result with h2n. Because of the associative property of both LTI systems, we can obtain the same output yn by convolving xn with the convolution sum result of the two separate impulse responses h1n with h2n. In other words, for the second representation, we can combine the cascade of two impulse responses H1n and H2n into one new combined impulse response Hn, which is equal to the convolution sum of H1n with H2n. Furthermore, because of the commutative property, we can switch in this last representation the order of the impulse responses H1n and H2n while the splitting of this new combined system results in a third representation, in which we obtain a cascade of two LTI systems, but now the order of H1n and H2n is switched. Concluding, it follows that for any cascade of two different LTI systems with impulse responses H1n and H2n, there are three alternative ways of representation. First, the cascade of system H1n and H2n, or second, switch the order of H1n and H2n, or third, combine the system H1n and H2n into a new system with impulse response Hn, which is equal to the convolution sum of H1n and H2n. This ends this video in which we introduce the concept of processing a discrete time signal by a discrete time system and the classification of such systems. Thank you for your attention.